Hello, hello, and welcome to lesson four on prototyping and saving plots. In the previous lesson, we went over the basics of creating and customizing scatter plots and box plots in R. These are the two most common types of plots for ecologists, but that won't really help you much if you don't know how to export these plots from R so that you can use them in your publications and presentations. So in this lesson, I'm going to go over a simple but very effective method for prototyping your plots until they look just right and then exporting them. First, let's upload the data and plot that we made in the previous lesson. So let's, let's load the data, of course, first. And then if we run the levels function on plant growth group, we can see that those levels are labeled CTRL, TRT1, and TRT2. Let's give them something more meaningful like control, highlight, and low light. Let's add this dash here. I think that makes it a little better. Run that line. And so now when we look at those data we can see that they've been renamed and now let's create the plot from last time and here we just have the the code from the last lesson so we don't have to write it all again run that and here we have the plots so the problem with the plot in the viewer window here is that the visual proportions of the plot are not locked in place so what I mean is see I can keep moving this around and changing the way that this plot looks so it can be difficult to get plots that have consistent sizing and proportions and difficult to know what size to actually make them since you don't have a particular reference point. This is especially a problem when you have to make multiple figures and you want them to all look the same. There is a simple solution to keep the size consistent while you explore the look and feel of your plots. And to do that, just use for max the quartz function or for PCs, use the windows function and for Linux, use the x11 function. So of course, I'm not gonna use either of these because I don't have a Linux and I am not doing this on a Windows computer. So for this lesson, I'm just gonna show you using quartz, but everything is pretty much exactly the same, uh, just changing out what function this is. So if we just run this, we get this blank window. Then after running the function, so if we run that first, now let's, copy and paste that here. If we run the function and then we run this, the plot was sent to this open graphic device window. But instead of leaving the default size, you can modify the size of the quartz window using the height and width arguments, or just H and W. So here, for example, we can say height or H equals four and width equals four. And if we run that and then run the plot function again, it will have created this blank window and now created and sent this plot directly to this open window that's already been sized accordingly. So the default is height equals seven and width equals seven, and this is measured in inches. However, it doesn't matter what units of measure you typically use, just remember that you can modify the H and the W of a plotting window using values that range from around one to 10. However, if you make the window too small, you'll get an error about the figure margins being too large. So if I make that height equals one, width equals one, and run that, you can see it created this really tiny little quartz window. And then I run plot, and I get this error in plot.new, figure margins too large. And that's just because the plot can't possibly fit inside such a tiny little window. So you can keep playing with the sizes of the window until you find something that provides a nice proportion between the text size and the plot features. This is called prototyping the plot or figure. So we keep playing around with this. Let's say we settle on, let's try height equals three, width equals three. Let's say, you know, this is probably a little too small. Let's say we settle on something in between these two. So let's do 3.5. All right, that looks reasonable. Although, see this middle label disappeared because the plot's so small. So let's actually keep it to four for now. I'll teach you some tricks on how to resolve that in the future. But for now, whoops, it's still a bit too small. Let's make it 4.5. Okay, that looks good and reasonably sized and proportional. Then to save this plot, make sure that the quartz window is selected. So make sure you click on it and then go to the menu up here our studio or on a Windows or Linux, you might have something else, but 
I'm pretty sure on a Windows you might have to go to, up to File, but either way, one of these buttons up here should give you the option to save it. Click Save, and then we will save this inside our Intro to Data Visualization folder. Let's actually go to Notes. All right, and we'll save it in Results. Okay, and we'll call this My First Plot. So I always recommend that you save your figures as PDFs. And the reason it's really nice is because PDFs maintain and hold on to all the information. So there's no loss of resolution. That also means it's a larger file size. So eventually when you submit for a publication, you'll probably want to convert it to a JPEG. But for now, or, or a .tiff, T-I-F-F. But for now, PDF works well. And if you ever do want to convert them to a different file type, leave this as a PDF, save it, and then open it in your system viewer. So for example, in your preview app on a Mac, open it in that and export it as a JPEG. All right, so let's save that, close it. All right, and now if we go to files here, go back to our root directory, go to results, we can see that we have our first plot here. You can also save plots by manually going to the export button in the figure viewer pane. So here, if we go to our plot, we can go to export right here, and we can save it as a PDF or save it as a JPEG or other image file type here. And then here we can also set the size, just like we were setting the size before using the quartz or windows function. But again, the advantage of this is that you can quickly prototype here. We're saving it without really knowing what this size is going to do. All right, so that's it for this lesson. I hope this was helpful for learning how to save and export your plots. In summary, we went over prototyping plots using a graphic window, using the quartz function on a Mac or windows function on a PC or X11 on a Linux computer, and then saving plots using the window and using the export button in the plot viewer. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. And next we have an exercise file where I'm gonna go over a series of questions to test your skills thus far. And then following that will be a video with all the solutions to those questions.